Hello, my name is Mark and I will be showing you how to cook up a storm one interesting technique at a time. I will be doing it the hard way so that you have a choice if the easy way doesn't work for you. In today's episode we will be making pretty good breadcrumbs, a beef ragu and some homemade mustard and we will be putting them together to make some Dutch style bitter ballen. Let's get cooking! Mustard needs a few days to mellow out so we will make that first. For Dutch bitterballen you can't go too much wrong with yellow mustard. You can make mustard in many ways, but the version here is one third ground mustard seed and two thirds pickling brine blend together, then thickened as needed. You can get creative with the brine if you want, but you want to target about 5% salt in the final mustard. Many recipes call for mustard powder, but you can grind up your own mustard seeds with pestle and mortar. Or you can just rely on the blending step later. Now for the pickling brine, I used a bit of vinegar, a clove of garlic and roughly equal amounts of white wine and water. And of course it wouldn't be a brine without salt. Actually, much more salt than this. If you particularly want your mustard to have a kick, wait for your brine to cool down. Then blend in your mustard seed and realize that you now have a grey under-seasoned mustard soup. You can add in a pinch of turmeric for that typical yellow mustard color. You now have a yellow under-seasoned mustard soup, which is obviously so much better, but it's still too liquid. Fortunately, this is easily solved by adding in about half a teaspoon of xanthan gum. This improved the texture almost instantly. If you like your mustard smooth, pass it through a sieve. It's a bit of work, but worth the effort. And you will get a very nice smooth mustard in the end. If you prefer coarse mustard, just skip this step. If you just want a little bit of texture, just add back in some of the seed later on. Adjust the seasoning, leave to mellow in the fridge for a few days and your mustard is ready. Breadcrumbs are next and this is my base recipe for bread dough. I start with a strong white bread flour, then I add 3 quarters of its weight in water and then 1% of the total weight in yeast and salt respectively. So get a mixing bowl, add in flour, water, salt and yeast, then give it a mix until the dough comes away from the bowl. Plot twist. I'm transferring this to a measuring jug. To stop the dough from drying out, I spray it with a little bit of water and then I leave it to rise until it doubles in volume. The measuring jug makes it really easy to see when that happened, but there's another reason. You see, for these breadcrumbs we're not baking the bread, but microwaving it for about 4 minutes. This cooks the bread from the inside out, stops the bread from browning, which we don't want for breadcrumbs, and is about 10 times as fast as baking the bread. After rising the dough we didn't need to handle it at all, so we've got a nice open crumb. The bread is a bit tougher than oven baked, but for dried out breadcrumbs this is not a problem. I found that processing the bread before dehydrating it makes breadcrumbs slightly coarser than the other way around. After processing the crumbs, we spread them out on a tray and place the tray in an oven preheated to just over the boiling point of water. That way we drive off the moisture without browning the breadcrumbs too much. After several hours you end up with chunky, crunchy crumbs. So chunky in fact that in this case they needed to be processed a bit further. But we still ended up with nice coarse breadcrumbs. Mmm, lovely. Store them in an airtight container until using. The beef ragu is a little bit more involved. Since we are making a traditional snack, the flavor profile is fairly well defined, so we shouldn't mess with the recipe too much. You will find the full recipe in the video description. We start by coloring some mince in oil. Yes I know, mince is a shortcut, I don't have all day. Cover with a generous amount of water to make a stock. I also like to add a carrot for sweetness. Leave to simmer and let reduce. Then remove the mince from the stock. We are looking for about 200 ml or half a pint of stock in the end. Butter is used in bitter ballon for two reasons. First of all, of course, it's tasty but it will also help you shape the sauce into spheres. Anyway, melt the butter. For best flavor, you want to keep it going until it stops foaming and starts slightly browning. Then add the mince. Stir 
Sift over your flour and stir it in. Don't worry about the flour clumping, it's not going to be a problem. Give it a little bit of time to brown and add in the stock. You should soon see it thicken into a sauce. At this point we would normally season the ragu with the traditional flavor palette of salt, pepper and nutmeg, but I like boosting the beefy flavors by using a little bit of yeast extract instead of salt. Rather than using powdered nutmeg, I suggest freshly grating in about a third to half a nutmeg for best flavor. Leave it to brown for just a bit longer and let's get it ready for the final touches. We want this to be a sauce, so let's blend it up a little bit. Then add in some parsley, flat leaf for best flavor. I keep mine in the freezer. No need to chop it up, the blender will do most of that. Finally, blend in an egg yolk. This will emulsify the mix and will help prevent the bitter balls from bursting when they're fried. Keep the egg white for breading the balls later. Traditionally, to allow the ragu to be shaped, you would chill it in the fridge on a plate. Then, once set, you would shape the ragu into balls with a diameter of about 2.5 to 3 cm, or a bit over an inch. The result is however quite irregular, and I'm far lazier than that, so I use an ice ball mold. I just pour in the ragu, close the mold and stick it in the freezer straight away. The only thing is that I'll have to trim the edges afterwards. The result is perfectly consistent and perfectly shaped. Once you have shaped your ragu into balls, it is time to coat them into breadcrumbs. To do so, first coat them in flour, then in egg wash made out of milk, egg and that leftover egg white, then finally roll them in breadcrumbs making sure everything is well coated. Then do it a second time for an extra crunchy crust. You can now put your finished bitter ballon in the freezer and pull some out whenever you fancy a crunchy deep fried snack. And finally, it's deep frying time. Heat up some oil in your favorite deep frying pot. To avoid the bitter ball of bursting, you may want to keep it slightly lower than usual, about 170 Celsius or 335 Fahrenheit. Add in your bitter ballon straight from frozen and fry. Watch out for big bubbles, they spell disaster. If you hear increased sizzling, spot the bitter ball responsible and remove it from the oil immediately, and you might just have rescued it. Then drain on a paper towel to remove excess oil, and then put on a little plate. Speaking of disaster recovery, they'll never know. Add a bit of your lovely homemade mustard, and serve. All that's left to do now is to know. If you enjoyed this video, please do the usual clicky thing and I'll see you next time. Bye!